And we welcome you to downtown Tulsa, beautiful one oak field where we are joined this afternoon by a very, very, very special guest, outfielder in the Dodgers organization, Johnny DeLuca joins us. Johnny, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, let's back you all the way up to Agora Hills, California. You're a two-sport star in high school. I think a lot of people, everybody knows you're a baseball player, but I don't think a lot of people knew how good of a high jumper you were. You also ran the 100 meter. Long, long, jump. Uh, long jump, I'm sorry, excuse me. The long jump and the 100 meters. So talk about your time in high school. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I had a lot of fun in high school. Obviously, baseball was um, priority for me, but I, I always liked doing different sports growing up, and um, track was the one that helped me keep in shape and stay fast. And um, I actually had the uh, one of the best long jumper, female long jumpers in the country. Oh, was wow. at my high school, Tara Davis, and her nice. dad was actually my long jump coach. So uh, it's funny how that worked out, and he really helped me. And um, it was just something to, you know, get your mind off baseball, but also stay athletic, stay in shape, and it's something I had fun with. So um, I really enjoyed it, and it, definitely looking back, I'm glad I did it, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, no doubt. I believe you had the longest jump in the southern section as a junior there at Agora Hill. So you decided to go to Oregon. I don't think a lot of people know this, but but up until 2009, Oregon was a club sport. Baseball was. They hired George Horton. They make it a real sport. And I believe in 2010, the first year, they won 42 games. George Horton, a very famous coach. Of course, Tim and Aki Grito helped build Cal State Fullerton. So talk about the decision to go to Oregon. Yeah, that was, uh, that was uh, a kind of crazy sort of thing, uh, making that decision because I was so young. It was yeah. going into my freshman year in high school. Horton had uh, saw me at like a perfect game tournament or something. And yeah. they were kind of the first college that had – shown interest in me and obviously being you know Pac-12, Oregon, Nike, everything, um, the new startup it was kind of a shock to me and it was one of those things where you know as a 15 year old kid that's like very very exciting. Oh so you committed when you were 15? I committed before oh, my wow. freshman before my freshman game um, freshman year in high school. Horton so, didn't play around then did yeah, he? <laughs> yeah so it, it was very early and um, it was something that you know they showed interest and in, I basically made my parents talk, and it was like, it's not going to get too much better than this. So um, that was something that we all talked about, and I was definitely excited with the decision I made, and I'm uh, very glad I went there. So I've heard that, you know, whenever somebody like me from Oklahoma thinks of Oregon, I think cold weather. I've heard it's actually not quite as cold of a climate as, as you would think, right? Is that it's, correct? Yeah, it's it's not too bad. That, when it's sunny out, it's the most beautiful yeah. state in, in all the United States. It's, it's incredible with the, how green it is and the rain. Everyone says the rain is pretty bad, and it does rain, but it's it's mostly, like when it rains here, it's different than when it rains there. It's mostly just, you know, a tap on the shoulder, and some mist, some drizzle. Uh, but the weather there, um, you know, it's cold, it's it's cloudy, but um, I, I had a great time, and it's beautiful there, so. Little known fact about Oregon, the ryegrass that gets put down on both Bricktown Ballpark and Mon Oak is grown in Oregon. Really? It's, it's, yeah, because it's, it's such a great climate to grow that winter grass there, but but you're known to have very, very, very hot streaks. And I messaged you earlier today, but, but you know, whenever you're in college at Oregon, you played Texas Tech and you were a home run away from the cycle. And I know you had teammates on this team this year, Clayton Beater, and then I don't know if Ryan Sublet, and yeah. you guys, yeah. But they were on that, that Texas Tech team. So you guys talk about some of the times you had in oh, college. Yeah, we, we definitely talk about that. That was my our opening series, I think, okay. my sophomore year. Yeah. And, um, I think I think they both struck me out. I don't know. Oh, so you got to face both yeah, of them? I, I think okay. I did face both of them. Um, I think one of them, I forget if it was Beater or Subby who was going through an injury, um, and it was like his first appearance back. But um, I can almost guarantee you, I faced them, and I I probably struck out against them. <laughs> they're nasty, but um, they are. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about that all the time. It's yeah, fun. no doubt. They were both very good in Texas uh, Texas Tech has a great baseball program. But again, you're known to have hot streaks. You've raised your average over 50 points in the last month, month and a half. So talk about the hot streak you're on right now. Yeah, it's it's tough to like try to describe, you know, what, what changed because baseball is that kind of sport where when things are going good, they're going good. And um, I, I've always kind of tinkered with my swing a little yeah. bit here and there, not crazy, but... Well, you're a baseball player, yeah, right? You gotta exactly. tinker. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta tinker with it a little bit, but... Um, yeah, some of, you know, working with Dylan, working with the hitting guys here, they're so good at um, kind of picking up what 
what's going good when when everything's going good and you know when it's going bad what are you doing different so I'm um, just trying to communicate and talk to them um, use my resources around me and you know make those changes and it I, I knew it was going to happen just because I was seeing the ball really good yeah. I, I felt like I was making good swing decisions and when that's happening but you're getting out you know it's like it's soon to be you know like they're going to fall and you're going to get your hits so um, I was just waiting for that time to come and it did so I'm, I'm very uh, grateful and very happy. You mentioned all the great instruction you've gotten and the Dodgers have in my opinion the best developmental organization in all the game of baseball so 25th round 2019 you're a draft eligible sophomore what made your mind up? Yeah I, I mean going into college uh, I always had and I think most people do like you want to play professional baseball so um, that was one of the things that I, I talked to my parents again I talked to my agent and it's like hey, like, this is a great opportunity and this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and this is what I want to do as a career. And, um, you know, the Dodgers drafted me in my hometown team. And yeah. It was, it was something pretty cool, so um, it kind of all lined up and, yeah, it, it, was a, it was a pretty easy decision once they, they came up and talked and um, I waited till the deadline just yeah. because, you know, there's that negotiating process that goes on, but um, I'm really glad I made the decision I did. So you grew up maybe what 15 miles north of Malibu west of Pasadena maybe 25 miles how far is that from Dodger Stadium without traffic it's 35 40 minutes but with traffic it could take up to yeah. two hours just because it's so did you know Jacob Amaya and Jason Martin and some I, of those guys yeah, yeah I did know I knew of Jacob Amaya I kind of played with him a little bit um, Jason Martin I didn't he was a okay. little bit older but once he we, we worked out at the stadium together this offseason okay. and we talked about because he's he's from right over there in Orange County is it yeah no doubt um, so we talked about that and yeah, yeah they're both great guys so you have a perfect story for young kids that want to become like you that want to play professional baseball that want to hit home runs like you do you weren't the biggest of draft picks you know you weren't the biggest of names so what message do you have for them how do they chase their dream it's it's tough in this in this sport in this day and age you know everyone's so good just stay persistent have fun with it um, you got to be patient you got to have fun you got to be a good teammate um, I think at the end of the day what, what's going to set you apart is you know being a good teammate and putting in the work and um, it kind of sounds cliche but I think that's going to propel you to, to be your best self every day and that's kind of what I try to do and um, you know just learning every day learning yeah. from others learning from the players around you the, you have so many resources here so um, I, I think I'm just going to keep on with that mindset and hopefully it'll get me to the show pretty soon. And, um, yeah, I'm excited though for the future. Make it to the show and you end up at Dodger Stadium. Do you have dreams of that? I mean, do you just oh, surround yeah. something? That's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I dream about every day. So. Yeah. Awesome. Johnny DeLuca, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.